Heartbreak for Spain, delight for the Italians who will still be in London until Sunday playing either England or Denmark in the final. And, and Liam, I suppose, look, a couple of things going on there. Um, Jorginho's penalty, absolutely incredible. Thrilled for Italy that they're through, but absolutely gutted for Morata that he had to, of all people, had to miss. Yeah, uh, the pressure was really on him, wasn't it? Because coming into the tournament, he was being crucified at home, he wasn't good enough. And yet he came on tonight and, you know, he got the equaliser and and things looked good for him. But we all felt when he was walking up to take that penalty that the pressure might be too much. And also he's facing Donnarumma, who Damien flagged up. You know, what a size of a man he is. And if he goes the right way, there's every chance he's going to save it. I feel sorry for Spain, but I think Ray said it there. Over the course of the tournament, you can't argue with the fact that Italy have got to the final. And uh, Mancini's done a brilliant job. And when you see Chiellini, Bonucci, these great stalwarts of, uh, of the Italian game, uh, and every chance, as I mentioned before the tournament, uh, or before the game tonight, should I say, Dara, that Chiellini's never won anything with Italy. Yeah. And now he has the chance next Sunday. They have Spinazzola's shirt there. I think uh, I saw Richie some, some tears in Donnarumma's eyes there. Yeah, these are, these are great scenes for the Italians. Um, it would be very harsh to sit here and say that either team deserved to lose that or based on a performance that each of them gave that neither of them deserved to go to the final. It was a really, really good game. Um, but I remember sitting here on the opening night, I think it was the, the three of us yeah. watching Italy against Turkey, and from that moment you just couldn't be anything but really, really impressed with them. And over the course of the tournament, I think they have been far more impressive than Spain has been. But some, some of the players tonight, Olmo, I think, was superb. Pedri was just drooling over this fella's performance mm. tonight. Um, what a career he's going to have. 18 years of age. I, I think it was nine minutes into the extra time before he gave the ball away, um, which is amazing. The amount of football he's played, the, the age of him, the composure, the, the head for the, the big games. He has everything, but he's not going to be in the final. Italy are, and... They must be feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah. Like Damien, when you look at these images, you know that the, the one thing we, we mentioned beforehand that they don't have any superstars, but they are a very united group, Italy. Absolutely, you can see it there. Um, best team in the tournament for me uh, so far. Um, I think they were dominated at times tonight. Um, but it just shows, I know we spoke at the start of the game, uh, how they have a dark side, how they have a sexy side. At half time, we spoke about you know, how they can be ugly for maybe 90 minutes and do a job on you. And I think that winning penalty shows how they have a calm side as well. They were never rattled at all tonight, even though they didn't play well. And to win a semi-final of a European Championships like that, Jorginho, oh my God, the calmest man in the whole stadium. <laughs> um, you do have to echo what the guys are saying because Morata, amongst others in this tournament, um, it's so easy to sit at home and criticise players now, keyboard warriors, trolls, whatever you want. So you'd hope everyone in Spain is putting their phones away and just, um, you know, getting behind the team. They've done a marvellous job, Morata included, um, considering the pressure and the stick he's had. Uh, Enrique to get the team, they weren't expected to get to the semis. Um, like I said, all they talked about was Qatar 2022. Um, but amazing, amazing game. And like I said, bring on whoever on, on Sunday, yeah. Denmark or England's best team I've seen so far. Like Liam, actually, and it's funny with Mancini, um, I think it's an outrage, by the way, his shirt was hanging out. He's been flawless all the way through, <laughs> but it was actually outside his, his, uh, his trousers there at one stage. He won't be happy with that at all. But on, on another matter, you look at all the players like Viali and Mancini, we're in that Sampdoria team that lost in 92 to Barcelona, but in that very stadium, um, the amount of, you know, the, the ex-players, you saw De Rossi there, the Roma legend, they've involved all these people in, in this, the backroom team. The experience that they've assembled there to kind of bring this whole thing together with, with yeah, those well, players. Yeah, well, we said Mancini's done a brilliant job, you know, and not only has he done it on the pitch, but off the pitch, he looks like the backroom team uh, are really popular with all the players. Um, we saw at the end there, they dedicated the song to uh, Spinazzola, who uh, got a dreadful injury in the last match. Uh, but they were thinking of him right at the end of that game. So they've got a terrific spirit. And, uh, you know, Viali has uh, had a big career, not yeah. only in Italy, but also in England. So yeah. he's back at Wembley again on Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it is England, there's going to be... Uh, 
it's going to be one hell of a game, I think. Yeah, for sure. Although, although we have to bring Denmark into it and say what a tournament they've had as well. Yeah. And they're, they're not going to go down easily. Absolutely not. We'll see that tomorrow evening. Richie, you, you mentioned, and Dem, you mentioned about the possible reaction in Spain. Like, before this tournament, with the controversy, with the COVID stuff, like they, if, if somebody had offered them a, chance, a, a penalty shootout in the semi-final... So before this tournament, when Enrique named his squad, he was hammered by the media, said, this fellow doesn't know anything about football. And Enrique actually, Luis Enrique came out and said something which was, which was brave to admit publicly. He, he said he's not bringing the 24 best players. Mm. He's bringing the 24 players that are best suited to the way he wants to play football. So he was kind of putting himself up uh, as the scapegoat. Uh, he was going to be the one that's going to be blamed if it didn't go well. And... He stuck by Murata, that was one decision he, he stuck with. He's, he's made several s selecting changes throughout the tournament, but stuck to his guns all the time. Stood up for the players mm. that were given criticism, um, appeared to be completely unflustered by anything that was thrown at him, and a lot has been thrown at him. So yeah. I wonder what the reaction is going to be at home. The, 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 there's, a, there's a very strong Real Madrid con contingency in the Madrid, or in the Spanish press, yeah. who have the knives out for him anyway. So maybe we're naive here to sit sit here to think that there's going to be anything but yeah. blame on his shoulders. Yeah. But after that performance tonight and the effort they gave to get to this stage and for it to be a penalty shootout against probably the best team in the tournament, I can't imagine he's going to be yeah, too harsh. We, we remember hopefully. tonight as well for the emergence of Pedri as well. I know he played for Barcelona, but to do it on that stage, he was incredible. Now, I just want to have a look at, at the, the Morata miss and then the Jorginho penalty, if, if you guys want it. Damien, do you want to lead off on this? Because... It's similar to maybe the Mbappe one when they, they yeah. lost to France. You just know them, <laughs> everybody sitting at home, the viewers tonight. You just never trust them, you never fancy them. Um, but on the flip side of it, amazing bravery to step up. He's missed a penalty already in the tournament. Um, but then this one, how calm can you be? <laughs> Incredible. Just That's ridiculous, it isn't it? You wouldn't do that in training. I wouldn't no. try that in training. <laughs> Never mind that Wembley in front of 60,000 in the semi-final of a Euro. It, it's, yeah. so, it's so unfortunate that it, that it is Morata that is the, is the one that's going to be remembered yeah. from this penalty shootout because like, as he was walking up, we were all kind of watching it through... through like we've I know, through your fingers, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go back. It seems, well, it is a while ago now, the Chiesa goal, which gave Italy the lead after, after an hour. Do you want to... Have a go with this one, Liam. Yeah, well, it was uh, it was on the break, wasn't it? Uh, it didn't really show us there. Here it is now. It's what I think Richie said, less than 13 seconds. 13 seconds. You know, they're from one end of the pitch to the other, and he's actually out of the picture here, and he he joins in, he runs like mad. That's probably why he had to go off in the end with cramp. Uh, he covered some ground when he came, uh, you know, all the game, and that was. Uh, that was a tremendous finish. Great goal. And we all thought that they were going to hang on there because of the experience they have in the defence. But it was actually a slight mistake by Collini that let yeah. Spain in. Yeah, here is the, the goal. And we thought, Richie, this is kind of the redemption for Morata. Beautiful goal. Briefly, yeah, the redemption. Yeah, yeah. Morata, he picked up a position deep. It's the position that Alma had been taking up a lot in the first half. You can see it here. And it drops deep, that kind of false nine position. The Italians just back off a little bit. And it's the moment Liam is talking about there. Chiellini kind of just follows the ball a little bit. Morata runs in around him. And what a cool finish just to slot it in the side. And the feeling he must have in that moment. Like a, it's a brilliant response to all the critics, criticism he's been receiving. Yeah, the, the, the height you, you oh. feel when you score a goal like that. And then, what, half an hour later, he's, a little he's more. the villain. He's the villain. Yeah, yeah I thought... Well, look, we'll see what the, the reaction is in Spain. Um, for Italy now, OK, they've, they've, they've gone through extra time, Damien. They've uh, an extra day's rest for whoever comes through tomorrow evening, whether it's after 90 minutes or 1.20. Um, like they, they weren't brilliant tonight, though, were they? Like they are, you, are you looking at them in, in a different light, or is, tonight, is the semi-final just, OK, let's just win it and get through? Doesn't matter how. That's what they do, Dar. Uh, they did the exact same against Austria, and it just shows at this level... Um, how to win a match, really. A bit, again, Mourinho-esque, you could say. They never really got their game going. Spain dominated them, you could say, for near on 120 minutes. They did all the ugly side. After 80 minutes, they're sitting in a block, they're defending well, they give away the goal. Um, but that's Italy, and it will not bother them whatsoever. They'll come up with their, yeah. their game plan to play either England or, 
uh, or Denmark on Sunday. So it wouldn't worry me at all, at all. And even the 120 minutes tonight, it's a long time to Sunday. These are finely tuned athletes. They could run all day. Yeah. Um, touching on tomorrow night, you know, I'd love to see Denmark to get through. If you think 92 was a Hollywood story, I think this is on a, a totally different level. Um, would absolutely love to see them do I built a portfolio on them over two years, so I know them really well. I probably know them better than I know my wife. <laughs> They're a really, really, really slick outfit. She'll be pleased. She'll man. love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can edit that bit out later. It's not Actually, live. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but no, Dara, they're a top team. And yeah. the, you cannot underestimate them. Mm. What, what, are you, it, doesn't, it doesn't shake your confidence in them tonight, Liam, in any way? It, it did a bit, you know, to, to yeah. see them outplayed. But I don't think the English midfield is mm. anything like that quality of the Spanish midfield if it is England to get through or the Danish mi yeah. midfield for that matter okay I think they're more workman like and I can probably think the Italians have have the better players in the middle of the park and sometimes that makes the difference so um, they've got a great chance of winning and Kalinis and Bonucci have got a great chance of taking kind of, that trophy back to Italy with them yeah the kind of farewell um like it, it, it's with them in it it's going to be some final the remarkable thing is they've only won this thing once uh, it, it, it'll be a hell of a final, whoever they're playing. Um, I don't think they'll be concerned with any aspects of their performance tonight. I think they'll, they'll focus more on the fact that they've got to the final, they've achieved their yeah. aim. But they've won matches and, and overcome a variety of different challenges throughout this tournament. They've played slick football when they've needed to. They've been clinical when they've had to have been. They can defend in numbers. They can shut down a game. We know that. We've spoken about that. And at times when, they, when, when they're not things aren't going their way when they're being overrun as they were they just they stood firm as a group and then when they needed a really calm head and unbelievable levels of skill and composure under the most pressure you can get as a footballer they seem completely completely at ease OK, the very latest uh, I've been told from Wembley that Mancini has tucked his shirt back in and he looks perfect <laughs> again so that is good news the Italians and all of us can sleep well tonight